In the previous video, video we started looking at basic properties of measures and we're going to continue with our third property which is called continuity from below. Continuity from below. And it's the following. Again, we have some set E1, another set E2, a sequence of sets, and these sets are descend or ascending rather in the sense that E1 is contained in E2 and so on. E2 is contained in E3 and so on. Then we have the following property. The measure of the union of all of these is equal to the limit as i goes to infinity of the measures of the individual sets. So what's this saying? So we've got E1 here. Draw a little picture. So this is E1. Then E2 contains E1. And E3 is even bigger. It contains both of them. And it just keeps going like this. E4, E5, E6, etc. And this is saying that the sequence of measures, measure of E1, measure of E2, measure of E3, is converging to the measure of the union. So eventually, you know, we're going to get this whole thing after we take the union of all of them. Could be the whole space, it could be omega itself, or it could be some subset of omega. But when we when we take these measures and we look at the sequence, then they are converging to the measure of the union. The fourth property is similar, use a different color. So the fourth property says, well it's called continuity from above. And it's very similar, but with one important distinction from continuity from below. So again, we have a sequence. And this time, it's a descending sequence in the sense that E1 contains E2, contains E3, and so on. Then, the measure of the intersection... Oh, I'm missing... Of course, I forgot the important condition. There's an extra condition that we have to assume in this case. So it's descending and further, the measure of E1 is finite. Or the measure of one of them is finite, but let's say measure of E1 is finite. Then we have that the measure of the intersection of all of them equals the limit as i goes to infinity of the individual measures. So here we were going this way in some sense. We we're going from small to big and now we've got basically the reverse. We've got the big set first E1 and then E2 is contained in E1 and then E3 and so on and they're getting smaller. And maybe they go to maybe they stop eventually. So maybe it goes in here and then and then the smallest one is is something something like this. So this is saying that this sequence of measures is also converging, but this time it's converging to the intersection of all of them. And this this condition is necessary this is is a necessary condition for continuity from above. Now, in a probability space, if for a probability measure, this always holds. So the reason why this is this is necessary, I'll just give you a very quick example. Take Lebesgue measure. 
that was an example of a measure which was not a probability measure, it's not a finite measure. And if we took the sets, say we take E1 to be everything from 0 to infinity, right? The measure is infinite. So E1 is, well, let's, let's say, so E1 is everything from 0 to infinity, E2 is everything from 1 to infinity, E3 is everything from 2 to infinity. So in general, EI is the set from I to infinity. Now, the measure of each of these individually is infinite. But the intersection of all of them is the empty set, which is 0. The measure of the empty set is always 0. So that limit, the limit of a bunch of infinite things, is not 0. So this does not hold in general unless you assume that the, the measure of E1 is finite. So those are some important, and it turns out, so the property, these properties 3 and 4, they're fairly innocent looking, right? They seem like fairly straightforward kinds of things, very sort of intuitive seeming. But it turns out that these are essential in the proofs of some pretty non-trivial measure theory theorems. A lot of times an argument will eventually boil down to using one of these two properties.